basis of what you teach, right? Is it the, is it a formalized program where like step by step, where it's divided into like you know, like you know, there's like you know four chunks or ten chunks. How how do you do it? Well, so first of all, summer camp sort of our crown jewel. It's our big yearly event. It's our annual growth conference for for service providers. Last year we were in Miami, had around four hundred people there. Wow, people like Jay Abraham, I Roger you, Love. Friend, right? Yeah, Love great, Jay. right? Um, this year we have uh, Eric Thomas and okay. yourself. Right. Um, we bring in a, a host of people. We we bleed out our our uh, speakers over time, so mm -hmm. you'll be by the time this hits, you will have been announced as as our next uh, keynote. Right. You're our Christmas present. You're to our the Christmas present to the coming. world. Man, that's nice. <laughs> and uh, basically, service providers coming together to learn uh, better strategies for marketing, sales, and then of course mindset too, which is a whole other ball of wax. Yeah. Where, Let's talk about. Where, that. where you know that's a difficult so thing. So, what do as you well. see the biggest problems with like the minds with, on the mindset side? Oh, of the equation? money, da well, money mindset for sure. And it's not cool to be rich as a There's service provider. There's shame around it. Like really? service providers actually feel shameful for being rich or making money off of their service because their colleagues think not in LA. <laughs> well, no, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we absolutely. actually work with doctors yes. in LA that really? are very shameful for They're, the amount of well, money they make. You've done a good job because you know, the, the ones I know are not shameful at yeah. all. Well, at least not scared to charge. <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah, well, that's that's a good thing. Is there's I think it's becoming a trend because of insurance reimbursement sort of getting tight, yeah. and so a lot of doctors, most of them that are doing extremely well, have gotten outside of that insurance world. Which then, if you are not taking third party reimbursement, then you better know how to sell yeah. because right. you're going to have to convince somebody to go into their pocket sure. and pay for your service. Those people are able to command higher fees because they're not restricted by insurance contracts and whatnot, and they're making a lot of money. But here's what happens is that the other providers look at them and they think you must be doing something shady. I mean, uh, you get it. It doesn't matter any industry. If you're excelling, there are those that are like, mm, you must be cheating. You must be doing something mm -hmm. wrong. I think that's far more prevalent in, especially the healthcare world. You must be, you know, doing some insurance fraud. You, what are you doing? You're doing some, you know, working with lawyers, and so there's a shame that's built around that. And look, yeah, even yeah, selling out, they yeah, think they that feel like they sold out. out. If you, yeah, if you you're no money. longer caring for people. It's not mm -hmm. a service. It's it's a business. Which there's nothing wrong with that because ultimately it is. And healthcare somewhere down the road got divided where the business people took over the insurance and the and the and big pharma, yeah. and they left the service providers to provide the service, but get basically what was left after they divvied up the the dollar. Well, we teach that a lot. Like you have to be able if you really want to reach and impact a lot of people. You can't do it broke. There's very few people on the planet that can reach communities and help change lives by not being able to sure. rub two pennies together. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've, yeah. you know, a lot of us have been there and that's not an easy life to live. So, you know, there's, it's, it's a battle. I think that they battle the idea and the concept of having money and in, in service in he the health world, they call it the business hand and the service heart. Right. And so it's like trying to figure out how to balance the two. They struggle with that a lot. What that, percentage of um, of people in the see chiropractors, doctors, do you think are, are went into it for for money versus just because they love doing what they're doing? Is it mostly did they just love giving value? Is it, I'd say maybe fifty fifty. And yeah. I think what happens is in school something happens to you, right? You get indoctrinated because look, anybody who's like yeah. I'm, that tells their family I'm going to be a doctor, the family at Thanksgiving is probably like. Yes, <laughs> this is going to be great, doctor, lawyer, etc. Yep. But I think once you get in school, you begin to be indoctrinated a little bit unconsciously that it's not cool to go out and make a lot of money. You're taking advantage of people. You're taking advantage of the system. Personally, we don't think that's true. Mm -mm. We think that you, you should be, you know, especially if you're providing a service that's saving people's lives. It's almost like teachers too. Somehow teachers became allocated to not having a very big paycheck. Right, right. Big I think salary. it's terrible. It's horrible. Right, same thing. You're providing, you're, you're providing the biggest service to humanity. That's really, again, that's, that's our passion is that people that are making the biggest impact, you know, and you see it on now because we have social media, but you'll see these teachers that, you know, are second grade and they're making a massive impact, but they're making, you know, thirty, forty thousand yes. dollars a year. It's yeah. super sad. I'll tell you when I when I went to you know, I spent um some time in dental school, believe it or not. Mm. One day. <laughs> and, and the re and the reason why it was one day was exactly what you said. They tried to do that. That's so why when I got into the school that day, it was orientation and the dean stands up and it was like 105 of us. It was the Baltimore 
College of Dental Surgery in Maryland, right? And you see this white haired guy, white jacket, very dental looking. Like he was, I was like, this is okay so far, right? And he's like, you know, welcome to the College of Dental Surgery here in Baltimore. You should be proud to be here. Dentistry is a wonderful profession, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, so far. And he goes, but let me say this. The golden age of dentistry is over. If you're here to make a lot of money, you're probably in the wrong place. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm in the wrong place. And I got up and I walked out. I dropped out the first day. I was like, this is not for me. But I met a lot of kids that stayed there. They heard that. And they that the conditioning started right there on day one. Like if you're here to make money, you're probably not in the right place, you know? But there's gotta be like this, there's, there's gotta be some sort of re-education at some point. Um, I think it should happen in the schools. Yep. But if it's not, is that some of what you do essentially? Is there like the big mindset behind the equation? Mm -hmm. A million percent. Because and it but that's it is chiropractors, but it's not exclusive to chiropractors. Right. Because it goes on. Here's what happens is anybody that graduates and they're providing a service that's expensive. They are saddled with student loans and then their mind starts playing tricks on them because here's what they think. They think I can't even afford veneers. So how am I going to sell it to somebody? Okay. So that's a very important point, right? Yes. Yeah, so they start thinking with their own. This is a problem I had with Stratton early on when my, I have a, a stockbroker who's 21 years old, doesn't have two nickels to rub together. Mm. How do I ask one to send me a million dollars? I don't have it in my own pocket, right? right. So it's the idea of, of essentially not using your own financial situation to use your map of the world to judge what others right. can or can't afford. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll look, look at it in a different way even, is that I think that service providers make the mistake of looking at it as a value of trading time for money. Like yeah. what is my, how much could my services be worth in one hour because you know I'm a person doing something yet the value of what you provide could have a lifetime benefit. So it's not about the hour that you work. So if mm -hmm. I'm a, a, a service provider and if I was a chiropractor, I would not be talking about like, this is like, it's not like, not like a one hour treatment. Massage, that's where, that's oh, where it, like, it, right? In a right? massage, it's, it's 60 minutes. It's Right, it's, right. So, it's so dedicated trading time for money versus like by coming to see me, what we're looking at is a, a one year program mm -hmm. of benefits to you that are going to, you know, it could be, I mean, I don't know all the benefits of being a chiropractor, but it goes huge. far past just aches and pains. Right. Oh, huge benefits. Okay. Yeah. And, and also just like, it's the idea that it's not, if someone says to me, I can get rid of your pain or I can, I don't want to forget the ethical or legal, but I'm saying, let's just say, right. okay, right. the value to that is it's not an hour of work. It's like, it's worth everything to me. If I'm in pain, I'll pay $50,000 that mm -hmm. someone take away my pain. So it's not about, well, what can, if you, whether it takes them five minutes or a month, it doesn't really matter if they take away my pain, the value, they got to link it not to the actual well, service. Well, here's what, here's what you get taught in, in school is that the prospect only wants to know three things. Um, can you help me? How much does it cost? And how long will it take? And, we disagree with that. I disagree too. I mean, if you if you have something wrong with you, again, you're and you you have excruciating pain. I even say put it in your in, in a son or daughter, right? If something is wrong with your child and you you find somebody, they say, look, Lacey can help you. She's the only person on the planet can help you. And you go to talk to Lacey, and she says, I can fix it, but it's going to be fifty thousand dollars, and it's going to take six weeks. Nobody ever says too much money. Mm -hmm. You figure it out, of course, or too long, right? But you—they are ingrained with this. That's what people want to know. They—they they, they get slotted in. People only care about: Can you help me? How long will it take? How much will it cost? And those are those are are are, are variables that are not that important in that world of providing a big value to somebody, right? I mean, if we're selling a, a cup or we're selling a table, you might be comparison shopping, but when we're talking about your health or a, a something that has a massive need, right. you're not comparison shopping, you're actually looking just for the best. And if you've already stepped into that office, well, we know that people are taking action because something's been taken away from their lives. It's not like, oh, I woke up and I had some pain today. It's It's gone on long enough that your life is impacted. Sure. Yeah. So really, too, the crazy thing about service professionals is most of the time when people are in front of you, they're already sold. Now it's just your job to unsell them, which, right. <laughs> which they get pretty good at. I'm yeah, sure you've wow. seen that. Yeah. So there's no scalability in a lot of these service professionals because they don't know how to scale a company. 
um, they only know how to scale themselves. And that's dangerous, right? For so they're any not really building an organization around no their legacy. It's really not a culture. No right? systems, no yeah. processes.